Aloha. Thanks for considering the views expressed in this Think Tech commentary. There are two competing vectors we really need to watch. On the one hand, we should watch the indicators reflecting the degeneration of the GOP. These seem to come up every single day, most recently the succumbing of the Heritage Foundation to Trump, the exclusion of Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, the GOP's announcement that the insurrection was legitimate political discourse, the outrageous racism and Nazism, the suicidal politicization of public health, and so many other things. Seeing the madness grow is genuinely terrifying. On the other hand, we also see indicators offering some hope, a handful of courts that protect the democracy, regrettably excluding our Supreme Court, the shocking evidence of conspiracy coming out of the January 6th committee, the investigations and prosecutions against Trump, although Merrick Garland is inexplicably AWOL, the remarkable reporting of some of the national media, the sincerity of Joe Biden, sometimes effective sometimes not, and so forth. These indicators are frankly not as impressive as what the GOP is doing. It's a race between the two vectors. Right now, sad to say, the GOP seems to be making more progress toward controlling the 2022 elections and thus the power going forward. But that could change any day, and the actors on the stage could change any time, so we really can't be sure which side will prevail. We can say however that in the contention there will be trouble and very likely there will be violence. We should all hope for a positive outcome, but the reality is that we need to stand by for the possibility of a bad time that will affect our society, and everyone in it. The important thing is to be mindful of this contention, to observe and evaluate the changes that are taking place, and to find an effective way to participate. But how? The GOP has suppressed and undermined our voting, and that's a serious impediment. Going into the street is dangerous and cannot end well. Trying to engage and convince former friends infected by the madness is appealing, but the madness is often baked in, so that's a long shot. Campaigning, lobbying, and speaking truth to power in every media available may be a better option. There is one other way too. Many of us have been turned off by the torrent of online political requests we get for money. As a result, many of us have stopped giving money to any of them. It's as if Putin is sending us false messages to discourage us from making these contributions. But if you could give money to a truly worthy candidate or organization, you could have some positive effect on our national predicament. The challenge is in finding and trusting them. This requires research and critical thinking, and acceptance of the risk that sometimes you could be wrong. But it's important. To put things in perspective, you need to ask what's it worth to you to preserve our democracy your civil liberties, your way of life, and the future of our generations, even for a single day. What are these things worth to you? Go ahead, put a dollar value on that. Do your research and make a contribution based on that value. If we all did that, maybe we could save this thing. Otherwise, I'm not so sure. Mahalo. Thanks for considering the views expressed in this Think Tech commentary.